When you shake his hand, the poison will be absorbed into his skin where it metabolizes for a 12 hour period. Nobody will have any idea you were involved. Rise and shine, motherfuckers. I am your host, The Stimulator, and this is the fucking news. I'm a father, I'm a veteran, and I'm anarchist. Those are three people you don't want to piss off. Who the fuck are y'all to justify letting people die in the streets with your policies and your laws and your legislation? The people you are after are the people you depend on. Eventually, this shit's gonna stop. Because it's our turn, we won't make excuses for the terror. Do not. Fuck us. Last weekend, capos from the seven gangsters of the industrialized world met at the picturesque fucking Manoir Richelieu in the region of Charlevoix, Quebec. Uh, ben merci, Despite a shit ton of hype, authorities very much want to avoid a scene like this, the 2001 Summit of the Americas in Quebec City. The motherfucking resistance to the spectacle of multilateral state power was pretty fucking chill with small demos taking place in nearby Quebec City and a brief attempt to blockade a highway connecting the city to the remote fucking castle where the summit was taking place. I've said it before, but when are peeps gonna realize that summit hopping is fucking dead? Yeah, well, you say a lot of shit. Fuck you, Stim. Anyway, despite the acute fucking lack of riots, the weekend was still full of drama as it took place within the shadow of a looming trade war. Yep, to the shock of his free market capitalist homies, the orange one kicked things off by letting motherfuckers know that he was gonna impose stiff tariffs on imported steel and aluminum, leading liberal economists to compare them to the nationalist trade policies to the Great Depression and forcing the other six gangsters to talk some major fucking shit. What kind of spine choice is this, you two-bit split hand fuck? Do you even know how the game works? You do realize that German corporations and own steel factories in the US, yeah? How about you put down your fucking phone, get off of Twitter for a minute and come at me, Arschgebot. I'll fucking end you. But rather than accept Merkel's stone-faced challenge to a back alley bare knuckle brawl, the orange one decided to opt for an easier target. We're polite, we're reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. Yep, after an improbable year-long bromance between Trump and Canada's pretty boy PM, Justin Trudeau, the Donald came out to the G7 swinging. Like a shitty fucking reality TV show starting the heads of two colonial imperialist states, this exchange seems to have been carefully scripted in an effort to rile up Trump's nativist base. Predictably, it also whipped up a wave of smug national support for JT up here in Canada while guilting a number of so-called progressive Americans into taking to social media to thank their neighbor to the north for being so chill. But as fucking weird as that shit was, it turns out it was only a warm-up to the main event. After dipping out early from the gangsta's paradise, on Tuesday WWE Hall of Famer Donald J. Trump met with North Korea's totalitarian cult leader Kim Jong-un in one of the most surreal fucking examples of political theater of all time. Two men. Two leaders, one destiny. Not one. Whoever Not made one. this was high. Now, if I can be real with y'all for a sec, as a motherfucking anarchist, there's lots to be deeply cynical about what went down at this meeting in Singapore. No shit. Both the orange one and the DPRK's dear leader are thin-skinned, sociopathic man-babies presiding over hyper-militarized societies containing massive fucking concentration camps. And six months ago, they were threatening the world with a nuclear apocalypse over fucking Twitter. And yet, with the deranged showmanship of a coke-addled HBO executive promoting a UFC title bout, <laughs> they somehow joined forces to produce a spectacle so intensely fucking weird, cringeworthy, and geopolitically significant that it brought Dennis fucking Rodman to tears. But today is a great day for everybody. Singapore, Tokyo, China, everything. It's a great day. It is a great I'm day. Here to this see is it. a historic day. I'm so happy. And Rodman isn't just getting emo for no reason. He had a deep personal vested interest in this, since his homies were both these psycho fucks and apparently helped set the groundwork for this meeting. So basically I got a lot of people together. I got Popcorn here, helped me out, my sponsor. Uh, thanks to those guys. And uh, it happened. So just to recap, 
Dennis fucking Rodman was supposed to travel to North Korea by an off-brand Bitcoin setup to buy weed on the internet and may have delayed a nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula long enough for Donald fucking Trump and Kim Jong-un to win a Nobel fucking Peace Prize. <laughs> And that's all the fucking news for today. As always, don't forget to support my ass at sub.media slash donate or buy a t-shirt or a coffee mug with my face on it or our brand new bolt cutter t-shirt at sub.media slash gear. And remember to follow me on all your mass surveillance and mind control platforms. Just search for Stimulator. Hasta la pasta, compañeras. <laughs>